I literally have to take the thumbnail before I was recording this video because otherwise I would not have the opportunity to take a thumbnail again. Imagine we get something like a book that I already own. So as you can probably tell by the background, the very aesthetic background behind me, I'm not at home. Hey besties, it's Joel, and today I'm going to be going on some blind dates with books. And I'm very excited about this because I've never really done this concept before, but I think it's going to be a lot of fun. I hope you're all doing very well and that you're looking after yourselves. If you've yet to grab that drink of water, please do so. We must remain well and hydrated. And if you've yet to check out my Instagram, nor my Twitter, I would highly recommend you go and do that because I post some extra bookish content that you're not gonna see here. So a couple of weeks ago I was doing some online book shopping as I usually do and I basically came across Mr. B's Poem of Reading Delights, one of my favourite bookshops to go to in Bath. I went on their website and they have like a section for surprise reads. You can basically order like surprise books that come wrapped beautifully in like twine and this brown paper and basically you just won't know what the book is on the inside and I just feel like it's a great way to like expand your reading tastes, find books that you probably wouldn't have read before and see if there's like something new that you might appreciate from different genres. I decided to get six of these surprise books and we're gonna see like one, if I've read any of these books already, but also two, if I've been anticipating any of these books or even three, if they're just brand new books to me. But each of these books was selected at random, wrapped and sent to me by one of the Mr. B's booksellers. Their name is Sam. So thank you so much, Sam, for all of these books. I'm just really excited to see what's inside. I think you are too. We're gonna get started on unwrapping these. I think I'm gonna unwrap all of them and then I might decide my reading order based on my interest in each of these books. I'm gonna pick this one, I guess. So we have a surprise thriller. Let us see what the thriller book is. I just love the way this is wrapped. It's so gorgeous. There is like this twine. I literally have to take the thumbnail before I was recording this video because otherwise I would not have the opportunity to take a thumbnail again. And then we have the Mr. B's like stamp, a little like stamp sticker as well. And then on here it says, a hey, surprise thriller. It's like Christmas. This is very much like Christmas. The surprise read for Thriller is Dog Rose Dead by Jen Williams. A convicted murderer with a story to tell, a grieving daughter with a secret to unearth, and a hunt for a killer ready to strike again. This sounds really interesting. I'm excited to read it, and it's definitely one I don't think I would have picked up before. We then have a surprise translated novel. Okay, so book number two, a surprise translated novel is Strange Beasts of China by Yang Ge, translated by Jeremy Tiang. In the city of Yong'an, an amateur cryptozoologist is commissioned to uncover the stories of its fabled beasts. I'm very intrigued by it. And we then have our next book. I'm gonna go for this one. A surprise novel from an indie publisher. It's the shortest book of the bunch. A surprise novel from an indie publisher is Love by Han Orstevik, translated by Martin Aitken. And this is another translated piece of work then, which is very, very exciting. Just from like the synopsis, it does seem like another interesting story. This is done by the indie publisher and other stories, and I'm just really excited to see like kind of how love unfolds. Okay, next we'll do this one. Ah! The book's fell, it's completely fine, but we have a surprise fantasy novel, and I'm just really excited about this one because it's fantasy, it's like my favorite genre. Imagine we get something like a book that I already own because I do own quite a lot of fantasy. Okay, so for our surprise fantasy novel, we get... The Fifth Season by N.K. Jemisin. Now, 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 now. If you've been watching my channel for the past, like, two, three weeks, you'll see that I literally have just done an entire series reading vlog for this book. It was also the late night book club pick for the month of March. So, I'm just gonna, like, put this down over here. I'll have the series reading vlog link down below. It's just a really great book. I would highly recommend you go check it out. I'm gonna get the book that's fallen on the floor, I guess, to be the next one. And better yet, it's the surprise sci-fi. Okay, so for our surprise sci-fi, we got A Memory Called Empire by Arcady Martin. This one has been recommended to me so many times, my friends, and they just say how amazing it is as a sci-fi. And I've always wanted to get this. I'm really excited about this one. And then we get on to our last book, which is the surprise YA novel. We got 
Ace of Spades by Frida Abike Yiminde. Again, this is another book I've already read. I'll probably look to like run a little giveaway for these two books because I've already got them and I don't really need another edition of these books. For now, these are the four books that I'll be reading then for this video. It's not six like I originally hoped, but we still are gonna get some surprise reads and we'll just see whether any of these blind dates will go extremely well. And so yeah, I guess I'll see you in a bit, besties. Hello besties, so I finished my very first blind date with Love by Han Orstevik, and there's a lot of things about this book that I would like to discuss because although it's like 130-ish pages, there is definitely a lot to unpack with this. Basically, Love follows John and his mother who have moved to a small Norwegian town, and basically it's caused this kind of emotional distance between John and his mother. John turns nine tomorrow, and basically he believes that his mum is going to surprise him with a birthday cake, and so to make the surprise even more of a surprise for him, he decides to leave the house and go on like an adventure or something in order to, for his mum to like have the space to make the cake. However, there's a very big issue with this and it is the fact that his mother has actually forgotten that it's John's birthday and is rather preoccupied with her own thoughts, feelings and emotions. It's this kind of like emotional neglect of John throughout the story that was kind of hard for me to read. Not once is she really concerned about John's well-being or his location. John, on the other hand, is very much preoccupied with his mother, what his mother's doing, what his mother's like feeling, what could happen to his mother. But throughout this novel, he goes on like various encounters with strangers and each one gets more and more like sinister and weird. In each instance, he kind of is displayed an image of like BDSM almost. In one instance, it was like a leather dog collar and then there were people in rubber suits. There could be some symbolism in regards to that, not necessarily in a sexual way, but more so in a way that kind of is symbolic of their relationship together as a, it's kind of like like a power dynamic. It's a very strange book to say the least. The writing style was very different from a book that I've read. Basically, we go between the perspectives of John and his mother, but the perspectives can switch whenever. Like I would be mid paragraph and it would switch to a different perspective. And I found that to be quite disorientating at points because I had to like reframe the entire like situation on the fly. And like my brain can't handle that quite well sometimes. Plus this book was written like 20, five years ago. I would definitely keep in mind there's definitely some outdated mindsets in regards to gender in this. And as well, like, apart from John, I think every other character in this book was pretty much unlikable for me. And I didn't really feel myself invested in this story. And I just basically felt myself sympathizing for John more and more. And especially with what happens at the end, like, it's not stated, but it's definitely implied. And I, it, like, hurt a little. This, this story kind of builds towards it with the growing cold of the winter, the darkening of the night and it's it's sad in a way because you really see this mother's emotional and physical neglect really manifest itself. It was definitely like hard to read at the end but throughout I just couldn't feel invested in this story. I would say that the author really does try to convey the story in a plain way. They don't really observe any moral judgments to any of the characters and I think this is done intentionally to like give the reader the space to form their own moral conclusions. This was interesting to say the least. There's definitely a lot to take from it in terms of a literature perspective, like the analysis that you could do on parental relationships, a like complex between like John and his relationship with his mother, maybe a lot of a psychoanalysis, maybe a psychoanalysis on his mother and the neglect that she gives John. But apart from that, like if you're reading purely for enjoyment, this isn't really an enjoyable read. It's not really a read I would recommend to people. So yeah, basically that's that. I'm between two and a three stars with this book. Now we'll be moving Moving on to the next book that I picked, which is Jen Williams's Dog Rose Dirt. Hello besties. So, as you can probably tell by the background, the very aesthetic background behind me, I'm actually in London for like a little bit of a break away from home, but I finished Dog Rose Dirt by Jen Williams. There was so much to like talk about and there was a lot that I loved about it. So let's get into it. So Dog Rose Dirt basically follows Heather, who is basically going through her mother's things after she died, trying to like figure out if there was a reasoning behind it and like trying to understand her mother a bit better because Heather is a journalist and so she always has this kind of investigative mindset. Through her like little investigations, she finds a series of letters between her mother and also a serial killer in prison. And this serial killer is called Michael Reeve or the Red Wolf, who basically committed a series of murders against women. He's now in prison um, after being caught. And basically the string of murders are happening again, but in the exact same style. And upon 
finding out about the existence of Heather. Michael will only talk to Heather about her mother and also these new killings that are taking place. And so throughout the book, we get to see Heather kind of have these interactions with Michael and basically trying to do the investigation on her own whilst also being slightly aided by the police. In this one, I would say that it is quite slow paced and the anticipation and the tension does build like quite gradually. However, it's done in such a way that you kind of get invested in Heather's story, kind of get invested in the wider tale that's taking place and the conversations between Heather and Michael and just see like how he details these different fairy tales to her and these different stories and like the little messages and meanings that came through it. And when we got to the reveal, I guessed, I guessed correctly what exactly the twist would be. And although it was like slightly wrong, it was slightly wrong in one way. However, it was kind of still correct. And I'm still like proud of that. I'm so proud of myself. I'm having like a good streak lately of like guessing plots of books correctly. But this book really did just feel like one about family and also the tight bonds of family, but also kind of the ways in which neglect and kind of abuse can really affect a child. Children can be like quite easily manipulated into things that they don't necessarily want to do or don't necessarily realize is wrong. It's kind of that nature versus nurture thing that is kind of talked about a little bit in this book and like different types of motherhood and things. This is becoming a running theme on my channel. I'm not sure how I feel about it. Like the kind of ways that mothers treat their kids. It's a weird, weird kind of like symbolism thing that's happening in a lot of the books I'm reading lately. Oh, I'm just like picking it out because I'm noticing it more. I don't know, who knows? The title as well didn't make sense to me until I read the book and now I kind of appreciate it a lot more. Oh. I just realized the cover is kind of alluding to the way the serial killer showcases the bodies. Oh, also as well, actually, this really delved into like cults a little, a little, a little. Like it's it's not exactly like a cult per se, but it definitely deals into the like aspects of manipulation that uh, take place in like a closed community. Overall, it was a really good read. I'd probably give it like four stars. Thank you for recommending that one to me, Mr. Bees. We'll now be moving on to the third book and the penultimate book of this video and that is Strange Beasts of China by Yang Ge, which is translated by Jamie Tong. I am seeing my friend Sarah today. We're going to Kew Gardens together, which is going to be really nice. And the tube is like half an hour long. So I'm going to have a book to read whilst I'm commuting there and I'm really excited for it. So yeah, my outfit today as well. Like I'm very in love with this like knitted jumper thing. I got it from Zara. Green is also becoming like a new color for me this year. Last year was pink. This year is green. I'm like Pantone. I basically have a color of the year. Green trousers on. They're like high-waisted as well. Like it very much all comes together. I might also put on a coat. Not sure yet, but we'll see. I'm probably already going to show you my outfit on Instagram anyway. So yeah, I'm going to get to reading and I'll catch you in a bit, besties. Oh, Hello besties. We're still in London, but I finished Strange Beasts of China by Yang Ge. And there is a lot that I would love to say about this book. Strange Beasts of China basically follows an amateur cryptozoologist who narrates romance novels about like the interactions between humans and beasts that have become like this normal part of society in the city of Yongan. Beasts are pretty much part of the culture and society within this city. And it's this kind of like fabulistic modern fantasy concept that I I quite enjoyed in this story. It is a series of like interconnected stories that kind of read like an encyclopedia of like what each beast is, but then there's an interconnected narrative throughout each of the stories because of our main character. Each and every beast within this book was very interesting to read about because it was almost this kind of like mystery surrounding each and every beast trying to figure out what is so like fascinating and whimsical about them. We have a beast that basically like eats someone and assumes their form. We have beasts that can be grown into other beasts and also made into furniture depending on how things go. It was just a really intriguing concept and I loved the way that it played out within this book. We really get like a close examination of each and every beast and kind of through this personal narrative from our main character we kind of feel connected to them in each way and just seeing the way that the story progresses through each and every story was just fascinating to read. I kind of love the commentaries that are surrounding this like 
kind of the way that people utilize beasts and use beasts in society. It kind of plays to like how people use other people and how people have used other people in the past. It's just very interesting because I do find this very like polarizing, I believe. Like I think some people would really love this book and some people wouldn't like it whatsoever because the way it claims with form is very weird. It's very much distinctive and I really enjoyed it because it kind of gives this like mysterious narrative that kind of unfills and at the end there's like an explanation of the beast and once the explanation is given you're kind of like oh now I see how the plot threads come in. I really enjoyed looking at like the wider society and how the beasts fit into that. I really just love the main character's narrative as well and how they go through it with this like weird relationship that they have with their professor. I remember finishing the first one which was about the sorrowful beasts and I was like this is a weird book like this is a weird story and then uh, the more I read the more I was like yeah, I, I'm excited to read more weird stories from this. I'm really interested now in reading more fiction translated from Chinese. I don't know what I would rate this exactly. I'm basically between like a three and a four for this, but overall it was just a really good story and I really enjoyed it. Now we'll be moving on to our final book of today's video, A Memory Called Empire. I think it's going to deliver a really intriguing narrative, but yeah, I'm going to get to reading. I'll be back in a bit to share my whole thoughts, wrap up this whole video and just see how many books I enjoyed from the surprise books that were given to me. I'll see you in a bit. Hello besties. So I'm back home now after London and I'm ready to wrap up the last book and wrap up this entire video. I read A Memory Called Empire by Arcadie Martin and this is probably one of my new favorite sci-fis. This follows Ambassador Mahit Desma who basically comes to the empire, like the capital city of the empire, in order to become the new ambassador for her independent colony. This colony has like a technology that allows them to inherit the memories and the kind of consciousness of their predecessors in order to like perpetuate like kind of knowledge and maintain the kind of legacy of their civilization and basically the empire is like preparing a kind of annexation of this colony for particular reasons and so the ambassador realizes that maybe her technology might be the thing to doom them or save them all and this book is filled with like political intrigue there is just so many amazing things about this book in terms of the world building that I immensely fell in love with the naming system the kind of lingual languages that people use in order to send secret communiques to one another. There was just so much like fierceness to this book and the way that it comments on assimilation of other cultures but also this kind of colonization and imperialism of a massive empire was just chef's kiss. It was it was so good. I really enjoyed Mehit and also Three Seagrass and just a lot of different characters that were presented throughout this. I think they were each like characterized in their own way and I love I I loved how the plot developed very slowly, but also you kind of start to piece together certain things that makes the plot just come together so nicely. I read this along with the audiobook and the narrator is just sublime. It just feels like you're in the book and just noticing the kind of things around you. And there was this kind of like outsider inside kind of dynamic going on as well with Mehit being a, be often referred to as like a barbarian within the walls of the city because she is someone other from the civilization that is inside. And it was just interesting to kind of see this kind of dynamic come across in this book. It's something that I completely kind of resonated with on certain levels. And I just found it to be like quite an intriguing analysis of this concept. Literally, as soon as I got 100 pages into this book, I immediately ordered the sequel because I knew I was going to want to read what came next. And I'm like, I'm glad I wasn't disappointed with the rest of the book. And I'm really glad that I enjoyed it. I would probably give this like four stars. And I'm really excited to checking out the sequel, Desolation Called Peace, because after like how this ended, I'm really, really intrigued to see what happens next. Arcadie Martin's writing is just so good. Each chapter starts with this kind of like extract of something that's happened in universe and I love it when books do that. And also there's interludes as well, which I'm a massive fan of. I'm growing increasingly like obsessed with interludes and like when books include them. I know a lot of people as well really enjoy this series and so if you've read it, please let me know. But this now brings us to the end of our blind date book adventure. I have just had so much fun reading these. Like some of these were not so great. Other ones of these were really, really good. And I just loved my experience of reading each and every one of these books. I'm definitely interested in doing more blind date books in the future because I definitely wouldn't have picked up probably Love, Dog Roaster or Strange Beasts of China without this video. I definitely would have picked up A Memory Called Empire at some point, but I don't know when I would have read it per se. This is probably my favorite book of the video. And so yeah, I would definitely highly recommend checking out this book. But overall, Blind Date Book was a success. 
success and thank you so much to Mr. Bee's Emporium for giving me some exciting new reads to try. But yeah, I'm definitely intrigued in doing this again and maybe hopefully finding some more reads in the future. If you know of anywhere else that does like blind date reads, let me know because I would love to get random ones from random places next time. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you've had a fantastic time watching me discuss the books that I have been randomly set up with. If you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and if you're new here, be sure to click that subscribe button so that you're notified whenever I upload next. I'll have all my social medias in the description down below for you so that you can go follow me on every single other platform. And yeah, this has just basically been a wild adventure and I'm just super excited to see what happens next in this series. I just can't wait for the discussion in the comment section that I know is going to happen about this book. And so yeah, I guess until the next time. Bye besties.